On this side of the house, we're sick and we're tired of people that are not to blame being fucked. We're sick and tired of inefficiency, and we're sick and tired of these people that get involved in the things just because there are other people who want them. We have to, okay. Now, I'm going to talk about three things, except for my model, obviously. Uh, we're going to talk about the blameworthiness of these people, we're going to talk about efficiency, and we're going to talk about the, uh, the uh, actual involvement and how this uh, industry is perpetuated. First of all, I'd like to say that the motion implies that prostitution is something that we're trying to stop. So let's not have that debate about why prostitution is a good thing or a bad thing. Second of all, our model basically says that the soliciting is the real bad, bad thing in prostitution and the real problem. And this is what we're trying we're going to try to stop. So the solicitors of what with those guys that go on and say, hey, girl, I'll give you money, whatever. It's going to be according to the judicial process of each country, according to criminal law. We don't really care about what the exact penalty is going to be, just that it's a criminal penalty that is going to stick on the record and it's going to be a real problem for the, uh, for the people that get the penalty. Okay, so first off, let's talk about blame warnings. A moral blame here does not lie with the prostitutes or with the pimps or whatever. It lies with the people who ask for these things. Most of the prostitutes don't do this because they're really well paid or they really like having sex for money and they really like standing on corners uh, at night. Most of these girls do it either because they're forced to or they, it, because they're desperate to do it. And we believe that these people, the real bad people in prostitution are these solicitors because what they do is they're profiteering off of these girls' bad circumstances. They're profiteering off of the fact that these girls are poor, that they're, they're disadvantaged, they're being oppressed and whatever. And we think that that's the real harm that we're supposed to be tackling today. What should, we want to shift the blame from the prostitutes and from the pimps because right now if you ask people on the street, they're going to remember who's, uh, who's responsible for, the, for prostitution. You're going to say, oh, those hooker ladies, they're so bad, they're so evil, they want to steal our, the, the, they want to steal our husbands, their sluts, their whatever. We want to shift that because it's not their fault. We want to shift that to the real people who are really to blame and this is going to stop the prostitution um, or at least lower it significantly because right now if people think that the prostitutes are the ones to blame, the people that go to and, and solicit prostitution, they're just having fun or whatever. It's like um, they're not the real culprits, they're just the people who are, I don't know, well, they really want to have fun that way or whatever. So we believe that we're shifting the message that the real bad people in prostitution are these guys who go out and solicit. And because of if, if we manage to shift this uh, public opinion, yeah. then we'll, in a second, then we'll manage to make the, the public think that those are the really bad guys, and nobody wants to be the bad guy. So less people are going to go and solicit, don't you agree? So sure, we have this policy with drugs as well, because poor drug traffickers, they're just poor, they need money, and you know, all those drug demanders are paying for it. So, why does that even matter? When we, we believe that in prostitution, this is the real problem. Drug and, uh, people in drugs really do have lots and lots of money, and, then, uh, and the uh, effects on other people because of drugs are totally different than the effects of prostitution. This is something that has more, more to do with the social status of the, of the prostitute that we're trying to change in the world. And we, we think that this is going to be a lot better. Now, go moving on to my second point about efficiency. First of all, obviously the resources of the cops are going to be a lot better spent because they're just going to follow one group of people. Uh, second of all, we believe that the psychology of, the, of these people is going to matter a lot. And, um, the, okay, so the, the way people work, the way random people are, if I go now and try to um, solicit prostitution, whatever. I am a random, I am a random citizen. I, I need a job. I probably, I'm probably, I'm probably pretty well off if I can afford the hooker. But even if I'm not, I still have a job or whatever. Now, I am clearly in a more, in a position where I have more to lose than the hooker. The, if the hooker goes to prison or gets a fine or whatever, she's desperate. She doesn't have money to pay the fine, and when she comes back from prison, she doesn't really have anything else to do except going uh, except going back. If I were to be the one that's really tracked by the police, really punished by the police, and really followed by the police, I'd be a lot more scared because I have a lot more to lose. And doing that creates an effective deterrent that's going to stop these people from going out and soliciting. Thing. Because right now they're treating us, oh I don't know, that these are the real corporates. The real corporates are the women who stay out in the, on the corners of the city. Well that's false. First of all because of the moral blame which we explained that's not on them. Second of all because this is a clear, this is a much better deterrent because if this demand goes away then the, uh, the whole industry is going to collapse and this is an effective way of dealing with them. Um, 
Okay, and now let's talk about the fur thing and about how it's going to kill the involvement, okay? it's going to kill the industry. Because the, the way it works is that right now, no, uh, I'll take opening if they want to. Okay, uh, so the way it goes is that the, the, these girls get involved in, because there's a niche there, there's a demand there uh, to work for it. Uh, yeah. If we prove that the, the prostitutes will be worse off, would you support these policies though? Worse off as in they receive less money? No, because I. I believe that it is, I don't think that's the point. The point of this motion is fighting prostitution. Anything that ends prostitution more than it is right now is going to win the match. And we think this is it. Okay, so what it's, what it's going to do and how it's going to crumble the industry is that uh, right now, basically, when the, uh, the hooker is caught and sent to prison or fined or taken or whatever, that just, the demand is still there. So the pimp just goes out and tries to find someone else that he can fool or that is desperate enough to fill a spot. And that creates a self-perpetuating circle that never ends because there are enough desperate people out there. And, um, and mm, tackling this sort of po poverty thing isn't, isn't in the motion right now. The thing is that if the demand goes away, if we criminalize the demand and we create this image of the people that demand prostitution as the, really bad, as the real bad guys, and if we create the deterrent, then, then even if you, if, even if you are desperate, you're just not gonna do it because it won't be profitable for you. It's not gonna be the the, the thing that desperate people do anymore. In process, and this is what's gonna kill prostitution. So because of the fact that the moral blame is not on these girls and it's not on the people protecting these girls, it's on the people that create the demand for the industry and basically perpetuate the industry. And because the, we think that a, a, an effective deterrent should be placed upon them rather than uh, the poor people who get uh, who get oppressed and uh, get profiteered off of, and because this would kill the industry, please vote against. So please, please vote for this motion. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I thank you for the floor, ladies and gentlemen. What we opening a position, not claiming, is this. We say the prostitutes are going to be much worse off. We also say this will not make the prostitution disappear. We don't even think that it will diminish this sort of thing in our society. And another thing that we are saying is basically that this social and moral stigma that they are talking about is something that is not changed by simply putting something into law or state saying that something is bad and someone is, that someone is a bad guy. But to start with my case, I have two points with which we seriously disagree on with the opening government. And that is one about the blame game and about the fact that we should, you know, blame uh, uh, both parties uh, uh, equally. We don't necessarily disagree with the fact that uh, one party is much, much more morally harmful uh, than, than another. We don't necessarily agree that one, one, one side is morally superior, but even if that was the case where they didn't prove, is that the state, when it says with, his, with its state authority that someone is a bad guy, that that necessarily means that someone is a bad guy. What we are saying is that the stamp of, of a slut, of a whore or whatever, comes from the society and from societal impulses, from societal norms. It does not come from laws, it does not come from the state. And we, we are yet to hear their explanation how the state will just out of nowhere be able to impose that sort of, of moral norms. We haven't seen it happen so far. Second point on which we heavily disagree is that this is a good deterrent. Now, firstly, if law was a good and, and, and enough deterrent for problems, we wouldn't have problems in the first place. Uh, human motivation is far more complex than simply, you know, someone may punish me, so I shouldn't do it. Human motivation, especially in this area, is far more complex. What do we think on that? We think that sex drive is one of the basic and the biggest drive that human beings have. It's not like drugs. It's, uh, it's something that is basic. It's something that is something that we have all along, all our lives, and it's something that we cannot avoid and we do not want to avoid. We have three groups of people that go and pay for prostitutes. One is people who get bored in marriage and they have to have fun. Two is people who, who, who love sex very much and they don't have enough of it anyways. And three is basically uh, a group of people who can't get laid, unfortunately, so they have to pay for sex. Now, uh, all three of these groups have to have it because it's something that uh, usually influences our behavior in other spheres. It's something that is very important for us. It's something that, is, uh, that, that we like very much and that we are ready to risk for. Now, the, the thing what? is that people are ready to risk even the stigma, the social stigma, which is much more harmful, that already exists. And go and pay for sex, 
because they want it so much. Therefore, deterrent, especially some sort of legal deterrent, will not be enough to stop it, because if it would, we wouldn't have prostitution in these countries in the first place. So it is not that simple. You have to offer us a better and a more complex solution. When does regulation can work? Is when we basically legalize the entire process of prostitution. Then regulation works. This partial regulation simply doesn't work. But since we're fighting against the prostitution here, and since we want to show the concrete harms of these policies, I will go on to that. But before I continue, I'm open to one point of information. Okay, so you're still not responding to the fact that these people have a lot more to lose, and it's a lot easier for them to go looking for sex in other places, like get a pretty cheap drug in a bottle. Yeah, but uh, the fact is that it's not that easy, and the fact is that they still do want to, and we don't see anything that is that, that morally horrendous to them. So it that doesn't make that much of an argument for your side. But what makes arguments for our side is basically four ways in which this harms the prostitutes itself. And we believe that if this harms the prostitutes itself, and we don't want to punish them, right? We want to morally equalize them. We don't think that this has a good outcome. One, what we have a problem is that uh, in, in reality, what you will have is that girls will not stand on corners when they usually stand. They will have to escape to some dark alleys. Why? Because po po police is going to wait for someone to come so they can arrest them. So basically, they are going to much more dangerous places and risking their physical security even more than so far because they know that, that the policemen will follow them everywhere and arrest their customers, which is a deterrent from them. Now, uh, B, and that is very important, is that they will escape from the police, which is the logic that I already used. And that when they see a policeman, of course they will escape from him, and they will not feel uh, secure, they will feel like they are losing their job because of this guy. They will feel like they are losing money, and they need money for all other things that they are uh, uh, in, in life, because they came uh, in prostitution in the first place, because they need, uh, they need a lot of money very, very quickly, or they can't find it on other places. Therefore, they have a lot to lose when they see a policeman, therefore they will escape from the policeman, therefore they will be less secure. No, thank you. Uh, we see a huge problem there. Now, thirdly, we think that this reinforces the pimp in the system uh, in two levels, which is very important. One, the pimps now will be, the pimp is going to be the guy who we believe. Because we will not believe the girls, they can ride us out or whatever, we will believe the pimp. This guy, because it is illegal for us, because we are being criminalized, will be a guy who will have a lot more to lose because it's a more dangerous environment. Therefore, he will put much more pressure on, on his girls and they will have to, uh, uh, to adhere to what he is saying, to what he wants from them. They will have to do who, who knows what for the customer oh, because he can't afford to, use, to lose them now because now it's, it is much more dangerous. And we will believe this guy because we are going to be afraid that girls who have nothing to lose if they read us out, who have not a lot to lose like before, when they read us out, uh, we will believe the pin. So another level on which we are reinforcing the reinforcing the reinforcing the pin is that for the girls it's going to be harder if you say to find a customer because it's going to be dangerous. Well, then they will not be able to escape their pin who is torturing and beating them up now in our world because because he is a secure uh, a secure source of uh, secure source of customers. Therefore, she has to put up with him because he has customers and it's not easy for her to just opt out of his system and go out alone and like, you know, collect customers from all over the place. Therefore, she is much more prone to staying with, his pimp, with her pimp even though he is beating her up. Now, fourthly, and a, a very tangible harm is that they will not go to hospitals. We see problems with prostitution because girls are getting sick, they're getting STDs and uh, they have a problem with that. They will go even less to the hospital because over there the police is waiting for them, pressuring them to give them, to give them info about the customers, which if they give, they will lose these customers. Therefore, they will escape the, the, the hospital as itself. And in the end, you said something about these social norms, etc. We are saying that if all this happens, the women who are in this business will get socially even more unaccepted because they will have to do all these horrendous things even more in your policy. Therefore, on your criteria, the case falls. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much, Mr. S Mr. Speaker. So, I'd like to address, first of all, the problem of the causes of prostitution and what drives prostitution, what are the drivers behind this activity. Second of all, I'm going to discuss the problem from a moral perspective and see who's really morally to blame. And, that the law, and I would argue that the law should reflect this moral conviction that the government shares. 
Thirdly, I'm going to talk about the effect of this measure upon the prosecutors themselves. And fourthly, I'm going to discuss the problem of efficiency and why the, the, the theme of the government believes that this is the most effective way that we can fight prostitution. Well, first of all, let us clarify that the motion doesn't require us to assess whether prostitution is a good thing or not. All, all that requires us to do is to see which is the best way of preventing this activity from occurring. The fact that, as the, the Speaker of the Opposition pointed out, that it will be harder for prostitutes to find their clients, well, we think that's the whole point of this measure. We want to make it all the more harder for prostitutes to find their clients because we believe, and this brings me to my first point, namely the cause of prostitution, that demand is really the driving force behind behind it. And what causes the demand? It's the clients themselves. It's the people who go on the street and solicit prostitution uh, from, the, from the persons who are willing to offer it. That's really the cause of this activity. And if the demand would be eliminated or would sharply decrease as a result of our measure, then we think that our goal of fighting prostitution is achieved and that we need no other measures in order to fight it. Because they, uh, prostitution is essentially an economic activity, it work, operates on the same basis as other commercial activities, and the demand disappears and the activity will disappear altogether, together with all its uh, negative aspects. And now moving on to the blame ordinance. Uh, who is it to blame? Is it the clients uh, which should be stigmatized by law, or is it the prostitutes? We heard from the Speaker of the Opposition that actually the stigma attached to prostitutes who are called sluts and so on will remain if, if we implement this measure. We think that's, that might be true. I mean, yes, prostitutes will continue to be stigmatized, but that's not the point of the discussion. The point is that we really want to, to initiate a change and to shift the blame, the societal blame, the blame that society uh, generally puts in uh, the, the problem of prostitution on the clients who, as I have explained, are, we believe, the main driving force be behind this phenomenon. So we think that by criminalizing prostitution, we, we add to the considerations which clients are taking into account when assessing whether or not they should, uh, they, they should tackle their problem of their sex drive by going to a club and hook up with a girl or going to a prostitute on the street. They said that it's, also, it's already quite bad for them because they're concerned about their families finding out about it, that there's a social stigma uh, attached to clients approaching prostitutes and so on and so forth. We agree, but we think that's not enough. We think that if we add an additional consideration into the balance, namely the, the criminal punishment imposed upon them, whose length is pretty much irrelevant. I mean, we don't really care. Well, the, the length of the punishment itself, the length of the detention that will be imposed, is not really relevant. But what matters really are two things. First of all, the, the punishment will be public, so that the, everybody will be able to know that a certain person went to a prostitution. It will not be as it is right now, where prostitution can occur privately if a customer is approved by the police, for example, but not caught by his wife. His wife we still don't know about it. And second of all, having a criminal record in most cases would lead to the client becoming unemployed himself. It would be a lot harder for him to find a, to get a job with a criminal record. We think that these two factors will weigh heavily in the analysis, the reasoning process that a client goes through when determining whether or not he should approach a prostitute. I'll take you. So how could this criminalizing the demand for drugs work? Well, we think that different considerations apply to drugs, and that's not really what we're talking about here, because prostitution, unlike drugs, is not a necessity. I mean, clients do have their same drive. We admit that maybe they can't live without satisfying it. However, prostitution is not the, the one and only way they can satisfy it. I mean, there are other ways that they can get girls. They can go to clubs, they can go to dating websites, and so on and so forth. And what we're really trying to do is address this problem of prostitution, and what the motion again requires us to assess is whether this is the best way of doing it, whether criminalizing only the, the, the clients, only the, the eliminating the demand would work indeed. Now, talking about the effect of this measure on the prostitutes themselves. Well, we think that our measure addresses a very important consideration uh, from the point of view of prostitutes who, as my colleague quite rightly explained, in most cases than not, they end up becoming prostitutes. So it's not a free autonomous choice that a woman makes to go on the streets and, uh, and uh, allow her body to be used by her customers. But in most cases, this pressure put on it by pimps or by, other, um, by, by, or by their own circumstances themselves, uh, which forces them to actually go into prostitution. We believe that if demand is, uh, is uh, eliminated by implementing this measure, then there will be a lot less pressure on women themselves to engage in this activity, and they will be determined to seek other ways of gainful employment, other lawful ways, we hope. So in this regard, we think that the pressure that is currently placed, not only by, their, by the prostitutes themselves, I mean, not only by their, the, their, their own 
their opinions about what, what they should do to, get, to earn a living, but also by the pimps and all the pe people who are surrounding, who are involved in this activity. We think that this would be very, very important, and the opposition has failed to tackle this reason. Now, thirdly, now let's move on to one of the, um, actually fourthly, to the problem of efficiency, whether this is a, an efficient way of actually going about tackling the problem of, of uh, prostitution. We think that by criminalizing only the demand, so by criminalizing only the clients that are approaching prostitutes, we would use police resources in a much more effective manner than we are using them right now. In the sense that right now we're trying to, to, to chase not only the clients themselves, who are not in most countries criminally sanctioned for, for their activities, but we're also looking at prostitutes who in most cases the, the problem with measures imposed against them is that they return to the streets in most often than not and they seem not to be effective, not to, not to have, the, uh, have had the effect of reducing sharply or eliminating prostitution. And also the pimps, we hear from the opposition that it's actually the pimps who are to blame. Well, we think that pimps actually play an important role uh, in prostitution as it is right now because they're offering protection to the girls. If we eliminate pimps from, from this um, framework, we believe that we would do nothing but to endanger the girls themselves and we would still not address the primordial problem which we have identified, the primordial cause of prostitution, which is essentially that it's profit generating. Why is it profit generating? Because there's demand for it. Who's generating the demand? Is the clients, is them that we should punish. And for that reason, we beg you to support this motion. Thank you very much. Well, first of all, because I know more about sandwiches than I do about prostitution, <laughs> but I still know more than the government. And it will work as this. I will explain how morally this all plays out. Then I will get into the rebuttal, and then I will uh, become. Uh, then I will analyze how society views prostitutes. Now, first of all, morals. Morals are very important in this debate, obviously. Now, when we talk about should prostitution be banned at all, there are a couple of ways you can do this. If we're talking about like traditional morality or religious morality, any government that would ban uh, based ban uh, prostitution based on religious morality would never go for for this. Uh, for this particular option, because that's not the more that's not what, how why they view prostitution as being immoral. So what we're talking about here is actually saying, well, okay, there are certain in reality there are certain abuses that happen. So philosophically, there's only uh, there is nothing wrong with prostitution. Two people in consensual uh, economic relationship. However, when that comes into reality, many abuses happen. Trafficking happens, systematic exploitation of women happens, and then an irrational government needs to feel that needs to step in and do something. Now, at that point, they view that they're banning that based on the well-being of the prostitutes. So, if we prove that the well-being of prostitutes is worse off, then we morally win the argument against the government saying, yes, then we shouldn't implement this policy because the prostitutes that we're trying to protect are going to be worse off. So let's see how that plays out in reality. These guys think that this is got somehow going to reduce drug decriminalization. Now we asked them about drugs and how that actually played out. Because drugs have criminalized demand. The point is people have instincts. And we feel that the sexual instinct and actually wanting to become uh, uh, sexually active is as, uh, as compelling as wanting to get a fix in, in yourself. So this is why we feel that if you don't change that instinct, then still there's going to be demand. But let's analyze that further, because they say there are many other ways to get girls. Well, first of all, some men are just ugly, and they cannot do it other ways. But more importantly, some of them are socially awkward. They, they even don't want to deal with women, they don't want to deal with other individuals, they would like to just pay for it and go. At that particular time, somebody who is that rational wants only one thing. They want safety for themselves. Now, at that point, they turn to pimps, they turn to organize, at this point, crime, in order to receive prostitution, which is something that they really need. And when you take them to create safety, then you get all the problems that Joa, Joa talks about. So even if you reduce clients somewhat, you massively increase the problems that are created. Joel talks about how they are now inclined to run away from the police in order to get clients. No response from that. From that. They, we talk about how pimps are going to become even more important. And these guys stand up and talk, tell us how big pimps are there to protect women. Yes, in order to protect their investment. But once they, uh, once they uh, stop producing new money, once they don't want to fuck clients, sorry for the... For the 
effort, the ones they don't want to fornicate with clients anymore, then they beat them up you know, in order to incentivize them to get back to the, to the job. So we feel that the fact that the pimps are now a much more powerful actor is actually bad. Third point Joel brings is hospitals, no analysis on this, girls don't want to get into the lawful system of the, of the state in order not to be recognized as a prostitute and not to be pushed in order to reveal clients. And finally, they are going to go to dangerous places when there is no police protection. At that point, they are much more inclined to go into territories that are on, uh, for example, that have uh, gangs, that have the different uh, uh, problems that uh, are going to happen. And final point they bring us is prostitutions are going to now be incentivized to re-educate themselves. And we say it's already a hard decision to become a prostitute if you do so willingly. So we don't feel that it's something that you've, uh, that you've done lightly. You assume the risks or that, that haven't changed or even, even, even are increased. Therefore, we feel that these women will still be inclined to do the only thing that they can because they usually feel that they have no other option to make that much, that kind of money that they need. Now, how does the society view prostitutes? And I have three points on this, but before that, first. Okay, so what you fail to understand is that if the prostitute goes into a more dangerous place, first of all, it's more dangerous for her, so more likely that she doesn't go there. And secondly, she has less clients there, yes. so it's less profitable, so she won't go no, there. No, it doesn't have, she doesn't have less clients. You, you haven't proven that she, she has less clients. We are only proven that you're going to remove some of the clients. However, the majority will still remain. This is the problem. Well, Second of all, no. So, why is this very important? Because we need to view, see how the society views prostitutes because this is the only way that these women can get out of prostitution and at any time. Now, first of all, they are viewed by the majority of society who, by, uh, as women who are giving away the social currency. The social currency is innocence and the, because innocence is very linked to marriage and having a stable life and this is something to be, that they are desired. So basically, one reason that the, the prostitutes are viewed bad is because they are sluts. They are given uh, in the same way. And this hasn't been changed by the government plan, so the side of stigma still stays. And second idea is that they, they go uh, in different social circles. This is why high-level prostitution is very different than low-level prostitutions in the eyes of the society. Why is that important? Because as we've proven, they are going to go more underground. They're going to be more low-level prostitution and they're going to be more exploit exploited. Why is that important? Because then they don't get the support groups, they don't get peers who can actually help them get education, they don't view the possible ways to actually be re-educated, they don't get good role models, and they are then uh, enclosed in a system where they, all they see is a perpetuation of what they are already doing. And the final point, we have people who support women who are involved in prostitutions and NGOs. Because they go underground, now they, they cannot reach out to them, they cannot help them anymore as easy as that. And when we talk about that, let's just talk about something that is really important problem when it comes to prostitution, and that is trafficking from, for some Eastern, um, Eastern European states. That is also illegal. It's illegal by any chance, and, uh, but why can't we stop it? Is because we don't have enough checks and balances of that system. Once we view that, once we push that even further on the ground, that means that because the pimps and the organization is even stronger, the only currency that that women have that can get them out of that is their body. And they cannot operate freely anymore, and all the profits from their body are not for them anymore, but for the organization. At that point, you remove the only power these women have to ever break that circle. Because we don't give a shit about clients as much as the prop does, but we care about prostitutes and we want to have them better off, we feel that this is an awful proposal. Okay, thank you. Uh, so first off, I'll have maybe one or two points of rebuttal for the previous speaker. Then I'll go on to the extension, which I think is pretty uh, substantial and something that we actually haven't heard of yet from either the opening government or the opening opposition. So first off, um, the fact that somehow if you, um, somehow if you arrest the, the Johns, if you arrest the clients of, uh, of, of uh, people who are uh, in, engaging in trying to uh, gain uh, prostitution to prostitutes, that somehow this is going to create a system which is uh, uh, morally bad or further stigmatizes the, the 
prostitutes themselves. I don't really see the connection between the fact of arresting Johns and somehow further stigmatizing uh, the, the prostitutes. I think that that was actually uh, quite missing from the argument. And the other part, which I would like to sort of uh, rebuttal a little bit, was the fact that you said that uh, if you uh, if you arrest uh, one second, please. Okay. Uh, second being is that if you uh, if you arrest the Johns, that somehow this creates a system where uh, uh, the John, it's a moral obligation, that somehow you're doing something wrong to the Johns by arresting them for <coughs> stigmatizing them for wanting to have prostitutes. And actually, if you do that to the Johns, then this will create a system more perverse and that they'll create more uh, morally incorrect behavior and it further exacerbates the situation. Well, it doesn't make any sense at all because actually we have lots of laws for things that people want to do that are bad for society, but we try to govern to prevent them from doing that. Just like stealing, there's a lot of poor people who would like to go to the store and steal food, but they don't steal food. Why don't they steal food? Because there's a law against it which tells them not to. So I think that saying that regulating behavior will somehow further exacerbate the moral deviance of men and somehow create a, a, a negative situation for society really is, is moot and uh, uh, flawed in many, many ways because we actually have lots of laws that prevent people from doing things that they otherwise would do without those laws and by arresting them. So I think at that point it doesn't make sense. Uh, now I would like to go on to my extension, which I think is what's missing is what is the status quo uh, currently at the moment? And what are we going to do with this proposal? Well, currently at the moment, actually, Johns are arrested for going to prostitutes. And the other side of it, which was not mentioned by the opening government, is that prostitutes are also arrested for prostitution. And I think that that is the key component which is missing completely from this debate, is that we're talking about uh, not further subjugating women who are put in a very vulnerable situation and not arresting them for the crimes that they do. Currently, basically almost everywhere, Johns are arrested. But what we're saying is, is that we only arrest people for the demand and not the supply. And what we're saying is, it's the moral, our extension is, it's the moral obligation of the state to protect the most vulnerable people within that state. And unfortunately, as we heard from the opening government, most of these people are either A, drug addicts, B, who are prostitutes, B, extremely poor and coming from very poor conditions, so they want to somehow improve their lifestyle and feed their family, so they are engaged in prostitution. Three, they're forced into prostitution uh, without their legal consent or will, and basically manipulated into coming to countries where they end up being prostitutes instead of working as day cleaners, cleaning apartments and things like that. And actually, what we do if we don't uh, <coughs> stop the demand for this, and, and don't stop the Johns is worth, and, and uh, don't stop the Johns from ask, asking for this demand is that we're further subjugating an already subjugated uh, portion of the population, which we think is the moral, obli do, moral obligation of the state to protect okay. these the most vulnerable people in society. And actually, by arresting Johns, what we're doing is that we're clearly protecting uh, these individuals. We're making it clear that this is unacceptable, that we do not condone uh, men exploiting women further by uh, trying to engage in sexual acts with vulnerable, uh, vulnerable percentage of the population and prostitutes. We're saying that prostitutes themselves should not be uh, isolated and, uh, and arrested as well for the type of activity that they engage in because actually very often they're not uh, accepting of that and don't want to do that, please go ahead. Great. From an ethical and moral standpoint, is it good enough to have the, the good intention of doing something and have an extremely bad horrendous consequences that, they, that we said? Or is it more okay. moral to get your voice uh, the, 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 the consequences which we heard from the, uh, from the opening opposition was that pimps will somehow end up further uh, beating and attacking and be more violent towards their prostitutes, which I don't really understand and I didn't see the logical connection between criminalizing Johns and pimps further pimping out and beating up their prostitutes. I didn't see any logical connection there, so I disagree with that. The second uh, argument that you made is that somehow this exacerbates the moral deviancy of, uh, of the Johns by having them do some other activities explicit and they get more violent, more aggressive because they can't have a sexual outlet with prostitutes. 
Well, as I said and made it very clear, is that we have laws which actually regulate uh, behavior which people would otherwise do without those regulations. And a prime example of that is stealing, where we tell people they can't steal. If you do, you'll be arrested for it. And so I think as the state, uh, we have a moral obligation to protect the most vulnerable people in society. The best way of doing that is to address uh, the Johns, the individuals, the demand which is creating the supply of prostitutes and saying to them, this is not appropriate behavior in society, we do not accept this, and indeed, you should be arrested and go to prison if you do this kind of behavior. And also we believe that what was missing from the debate is the fact of what the status quo is at the moment. And the status quo at the moment is both the Johns and the prostitutes get arrested for the crime. So what we're saying, <laughs> what this motion in my view and in the view of us is all about is that it's about uh, not uh, subjugating further a vulnerable portion of the population to address the demand issue, which is creating the supply, which is creating this further subjugation of already subjugated people in society, and stopping a very immoral and dangerous act, which actually uh, is very, very re directly related to sexually transmitted <coughs> diseases, because many of the women who are prostitution or drug addicts. So because of all those points uh, that we stressed, and also the fact that we don't want to further subjugate women who have already been subjugated, we beg you to uh, support us and what we provide. Thank you very much. Everything is about sex, except for sex. Sex is, po is about power. This is what Oswald said, and I think he's very right about that. And I think most of the team seats now understand how sex is about money as well, and how it's not about the prostitutes, it's not about the jobs, it's all about the organized crimes that are using and subjugating these women into making profits of their backs. And this is why I think the government bench has failed to show us how prostitution really stops. Before going on to my extension of organized crime and how that's the actual issue in this situation, let's do a bit of rebuttal on what the proposition says. The proposition goes very much, as you've seen, if you've noticed, all that they say is that we really need to prosecute the Johns. They never say why should we should only prosecute only the Johns. And this, I think, is where the government failed. The government never showed why it shouldn't prosecute the suppliers. Now, when I say suppliers, I don't say the women. When I say suppliers, I mean the pits, I mean the organized crime that's behind it, that's using these women, that's shipping them from China because, you know, there's plenty of white old people that are willing to pay. So we don't understand why these people shouldn't, you know, thank you, why these people shouldn't really pay anything. They go out and say, you know, how we're subjugating the women, but the women aren't as much subjugated, firstly, about the men that are having sex with them. But I think they're much more subjugated by these pimps, and they need to be freed of them. Even more, I'm not even sure if it would be even better for them to be in prison for the night, where they don't have to constantly have sex with somebody for their survival, and, you know, they can actually get food and shower and not be constantly abused. So I'm not quite sure that, you know, arresting the prostitutes is necessarily such a bad thing for them, where the alternative is that they have to sit in, in a dark room and lick somebody's boots all night long. So I think, you know, we're, we're not really sure on that one. And I think that the opposition bench, whilst we were trying to somehow protect the prostitutes as much, we admit that in this motion we need to fight prostitutes. So we are trying to fight prostitutes as best as we can. Then again, the second government also says, well, you know, Johns are going to be arrested. And I think that this goes really against what the first government said. When they say the moment when we start arresting people for demand, that's the moment we kill demand and then prostitution goes away. So then we see that we are already arresting them, so why hasn't prostitution gone away? We obviously there's something wrong in that analysis over there. And then they go on and say, no, thank you, you know, how would stealing, if you know, we're saying that you shouldn't steal. Well sure, we don't see how stealing is the same thing with prostitution. I more see prostitution like something like drugs, which the government has been very, you know, insistent on no drugs and prostitution are nothing alike. But we see that it's quite alike, you know, you want something, drugs or sex, and you're willing to sell it. We think that the moment that we should in a bit. We, we see that you know we should first destroy the suppliers because it's easier to catch them than the hundreds of people who are taking the map. Yeah. The reason why the analogy with drugs fails is because we, we're not trying uh, uh, an additional element is the fact that we're trading in persons rather than products and those persons which are being traded that we're trying to protect is more like human trafficking. Should we punish people who solicit human trafficking? Yes, we should. But we should also punish people who do and supply human trafficking. That's the whole problem. I don't understand why we should only uh, you know, only 
put the blame on people who demand it. And that's the whole thing with drugs as well. We think that for these people, these women aren't human beings, these women are products, and that's what's wrong. But it's wrong also because of the pimps and the organized crimes behind it. So let me really fast and move on to my own point about organized crime. Because I'm going to talk about lots and lots of stuff. So, you know, let's talk about, for example, uh, in Chinatown, we have these groups called thongs. They're basically, you know, these synd crime syndicates. And everybody is, has a certain revenue, and they never cross again. Somebody do gambling and some people do prostitution. Now, what happens when we only make demand being playful? That moment, we firstly we liberate all these people to be able to go and on their business and make lots and lots of money. As we've seen, because the analysis was wrong that once you know it's uh, illegal, demand will go away. Demand still exists, even though it's illegal, as the second government has proposed. We will still have prostitution. But in this moment, we are giving all these crime syndicates all the power to go and you know basically have prostitutes at every corner, because suddenly it's nothing for them. They can't really be prosecuted. We can't really fight against those crimes in the kids who use prostitutions to gain money. Second of all, let's talk about blackmail. Because right now, when both sides are liable, you can't be blackmailed. But the moment we make only one side liable, that means we let prostitution, prostitutes, and not them. Let's say that they're really the poor women that everybody claims them to be, although I think that's a general assumption. Let's talk about the pimps. Right. The pimps can blackmail all the clients. Why? Because you know it's not illegal to supply, but it's illegal to have demand. So suddenly we give them another source of revenue. And we know that international crime syndicates use blackmail to get lots and lots of money. So here, take some more money because we really like crime syndicates and we really want them in our society. And I think they never show the same thing about them. They talk about the desperate women that the prostitutes are. Sure. Prostitutes are desperate, which means they're more likely to blackmail their clients if they're working for themselves because they want the money and they need the money. So what we're doing is we're actually creating this system in which the demand, who, poor guy, you know, he just can't get laid, he just wants some sex, he doesn't necessarily abuse the prostitutes. I think this is a far assumption that all prostitutes are these abused men and women. If we look at the gay community, for example, we see so many gay prostitutes who are far from being abused. They like it. They get lots of money from it. We think, you know, it's a general assumption. But now, you can also get money by blackmailing people. So you're more likely to become a prostitute because suddenly there's more money in it. Because A, you know, it's not illegal, then, you know, what's the problem with becoming a prostitute? And B, you can actually blackmail right. all these rich people that are having sex with you to actually get lots of money. And then let's talk about easier recruitment. No, thank you. Let's talk about easier recruitment. We also make these organized crimes recruit women easier. Why? Because now it's not illegal to be a prostitute. It's just illegal to demand right. prostitutes. It's much easier to create a rhetoric to which you can bring women from China, for example, or from other parts of the country, because, you know, it's not illegal. There's no problem for you as a prostitute. So suddenly, you're much more, you know, fine with going and, you know, being helped by all these tongues and all the triads and all the yakuza in the world. So we think that the actual problem, Madam Speaker, is these organized crimes. We never understood why only demand, and I stress it, only demand should be banned, you know, should be criminalized. Sure, we might be fine with the system in which both sides are criminalized, but the problem is the moment you criminalize only one, you create this imbalance of power. And again, as I keep saying, sex is about power. And the moment that we create this system in which we give organized crime even more of this power, because we're already saying, fine, you know, we have to just go and make lots of money with prostitutes because we won't really come and stop you. And also, we let them blackmail people, and we let them recruit easier. So at the end of the day, this is what we're saying. We are saying that the suppliers, we, we understand that, let's say, most prostitutes are poor, and most prostitutes are not necessarily doing a very well job. But we're not uh, talking about them. We're talking about the suppliers themselves, which are these pimps. Who has been, we've talked about them, but I think that nobody in this debate <coughs> now has talked about the supply chain itself and how it's best to stop it. For that reason, Madam Speaker, I beg to propose. Good afternoon, everyone. To sum up this debate, I would like to first of all to, um, to remind us what were the main clashes in this debate. So, first of all, the main clash of this debate was whether to legalize or to criminalize the prostitution. So, uh, the uh, opposition, uh, the opposition tried to. Uh, Write us with the, the arguments they thought would be convincing, but as we see, um, uh, as we look at them, we see that they are not really that convincing. Uh, the opposition tells us that once we uh, uh, legalize the prostitution, uh, once we criminalize the prostitution, it will be harder for women to find a customer, and the fact that they have like men who provide them with the customers and clients, 
it is a secure source of profit, secure source of uh, customers, and even though, which is a quote, even though women are uh, uh, beaten, so uh, <coughs> still this is the best way how to deal with this, uh, how to deal with this situation. However, if we, um, uh, these arguments really seem ridiculous when we look into the nature of the issue. Because uh, what uh, we are comparing here is uh, you know, just uncomparable things. Uh, we uh, believe that the lives of women and lives of people which we are discussing here are really much more important uh, than the fact that some people cannot find a boyfriend and a girlfriend and satisfy their sexual wishes. These are really two things which we, uh, they, they really stand on different levels. So what we should think about is how we can, what is the main question, is how we can, whether we need to, uh, uh, whether we need to help and to support the women that end up in situations uh, where we, uh, they have to sell their body. So uh, when we look at the problems uh, of the prosecution, we see that they are really the victims in this uh, in the situations. As it has already been mentioned, sorry, later, as it has already been mentioned by the government, uh, this is in, mo in most of the cases women become prostitutes not so out of their own will. They uh, uh, end up in such situations because out uh, because of poverty or because they uh, uh, they have no other choice. Oh. Um, like let's like uh, let's uh, uh, th there are lots of uh, I'm sure you know that there are lots of uh, now. Uh, Examples when uh, people are uh, being, like, uh, for example, offered a job, I don't know, in some other state, uh, uh, in some other country, and told that they are going to be shop assistants or models or something, but they are just simply uh, put, forced uh, to be prostitutes. Their documents are taken away, and uh, um, they have uh, simply no other. Uh, they cannot uh, anyhow. Uh, uh, protect themselves, and this is our task to protect uh, those people. So, uh, um, and we are here to show our support, and uh, uh, we believe that it's uh, totally uh, wrong uh, to uh, uh, to legalize prostitution because uh, this will uh, also. Uh, 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 this will even more aggravate and deteriorate the situation of uh, the women involved in prostitution. Uh, yes? Pimps sometimes inject their <coughs> prostitutes with heroin in order to keep them in prostitution. Why do you want to empower them and for somebody who wants to have sex say the only way you can get it is to get into a safe environment where an organized crime can protect us from the police. The only way I can get prostitution is by going to the pimps now. Why is it a good idea to empower them? I don't think that this, uh, we believe that uh, uh, this way is not to empower them, but <coughs> otherwise to, uh, um, uh, to make, uh, uh, to limit their activity. Uh, as, uh, um, uh, uh, what I, uh, uh, the government has, uh, you have one of the next questions, which is also related to your question, is that you say that it is, uh, um, you don't see how the uh, criminalization of the men is going to be efficient. However, if you would have listened to the government carefully, you would have heard that uh, the uh, government offered a, a clear mechanism how it will work. Uh, because the government has said that the uh, demand is something that drives the uh, something that drives the uh, sorry I will finish uh, something that drives uh, supply. Uh, we should focus on the demand, and uh, 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 once we criminalize the demand, uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, there will be criminal records about the uh, about the clients of prostitutes, and uh, as it has been mentioned by the government, it will really. Uh, make their life uh, more complicated, such as, for example, finding a job and uh, like, uh, their reputation in the society, etc., etc. So this is how this uh, mechanism is going to work. And also, um, I uh, uh, one more thing that has been uh, discussed uh, between uh, 
has been argued between the two groups is that uh, who is to blame. And like I would like to, just a second, I would like to uh, point out again <coughs> who is to blame. Oh, <laughs> uh, is uh, that uh, 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 these women do not, I would like to point once again that these women uh, do not become prostitutes out of their own uh, will. And it is clear that they are not to blame. This is the people who uh, want to use them are to blame. So uh, I would like to uh, uh, repeat again our main points. We believe that the, we should uh, legal, uh, we should criminalize the prostitution, and the way how to do it more efficient is to uh, criminalize the demand because the uh, uh, the supply is uh, the uh, we cannot criminalize the supply because. We, our task is to support those women but uh, and to help them. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, today I will conclude by first rebutting on what the government had said. I do not think the government are right in a lot of sense. First of all, the government has been saying that uh, to punish the demand, to criminalize the demand side, that there would actually be uh, there would actually be a decrease in criminality. I'm not sure about that. They have also said that we need to protect the vulnerable member of the society, namely the prostitutes, and therefore we should not criminalize the supply side. The question is, are all prostitutes vulnerable? Answer is not. There are high class prostitutes that ask for thousands of dollars for um, for for clients. In Hong Kong, we do have a lot of popular pop stars who are, who are actually prostitutes and ask for clients. So uh, in Taiwan and Japan, and in Tha and for example, in, there are another scenario where uh, members of the society are not really vulnerable. In Japan, the pornographic industry is very popular. And the porn, porn stars would actually uh, engage in prostitution, which not really encourages um, them to get more business for, with clients, but also more business for filming. So in that sense, what I'm saying is, um, even though if we criminalize the demand side, we would not necessarily deter prostitution. And, and it's also not also only about deterrence. Criminalization is also about rehabilitation. These women who are in, involved in this industry as pop stars, as porn stars, they got brainwashed into believing it's all right to, to be a prostitute. We need to Why criminalize them just so we can make sure that they do not uh, go into prostitution again. Yes, one of you. Yeah, what you just said earlier about high class prostitutes, I surely have the question of whether we should criminalize prostitution, whereas today's motion requires us to assess how we should fight against them. Those are not really good. Yes, that, that is correct. What I'm saying is, because did, by focusing on the supply side, we would, sorry, by focusing on the demand side, we would not be able to completely eradicate prostitution. We, what we need to do is to focus on both the demand side and the supply side to criminalize, not only to deter, but also to rehab rehabilitate. Oh, yeah. And that moves to my next argument about how to, on rebuttal, on what, how the government affirmative has been saying that the moral blameworthiness is on the men, not on the, not on the women. Is that true? In China, it is leave, uh, sorry, the supply side is being criminalized, the demand side is not. But the men are always blamed for, for going for prostitutes. So what I'm saying is, law may not necessarily, incur, uh, may not necessarily assign the blameworthiness. Society has already assigned for blameworthiness. And it's not only about the blameworthiness of the men who go for prostitutes, it's also about the blameworthiness of those uh, of the pimps who organize the crime. Are we, supposed, are we supposed to focus on the demand side because we say men are supposed to be blameworthy, but we do not for, we forgot about the supply side where men who arrange for women to become prostitutes are not blameworthy? I see a contradiction in that. Yes. Okay, so in China, you tried, the people that tried criminalizing the pimps and the bookers, but they didn't try criminalizing the clients. This is the only way, the only place in the circle that you can break the circle, because those are the people who actually can be renewed all the way through, because they're not that desperate. Correct, I agree. What I do not agree 
is that we should only focus on the demand side. This, you're co very correct that the supply side had actually worked in the sense that prostitution is somewhat deterred. But is it completely deterred? We need to criminalize both the demand side and the supply side. And not what the government is saying, only the demand right. side. Right. Lastly, about re rebutting uh, on the efficiency of um, efficiency that uh, if there is more sorry. Lastly, on rebutting about how efficient it would be to criminalize the demand side only. The affirmative are saying that because the, demand, the people who are demanding it are rich people, uh, they got jobs and they, they don't want to be to have a criminal record which would deter, which would affect a career. It would be more efficient to punish them. They're also saying the supply side, the prostitutes are poor, and therefore criminalizing them would actually make, turn them into property. Yes, very true for the, po for the poverty uh, about poor poor prostitutes. But we have neglected that demand based on sex drive are not only for rich people. In Hong Kong, there are construction workers who would pay for uh, 100 uh, US dollar just to have sex with a prostitute. It doesn't mean that, it's not true that if we punish the demand side only, they are the people who are actually, who would be more deterred. To sum up, I would, I would like to uh, focus on the fact that we are encouraging, we are encouraging, sorry, we are focusing, we are focusing on a false dilemma that we should only uh, criminalize on the demand side or criminalize on the supply side. No, organized crime doesn't work like that. Organized crime work on both the demand side and the supply side. We need to tackle both. We need to tackle both the organized side and the supply side. Organized crime has uh, subjugated women into believing uh, that uh, it's, sorry, organized crime has subjugated women. It's true, it's, pro it's very correct. <coughs> we have, we, the opposition has already mentioned that we shouldn't encourage PIM because encourage PIM would actually encourage prostitute dependence on the PIM. Maybe, maybe not, but what I'm saying is what I'm, saying, what I'm saying is, organized crime does have an effect on uh, why prostitutes actually go out and solicit for clients. It also, it also provides an opportunity for clients to look for prostitutes. Think about it. A, a man on the street looking for prostitutes, and a woman on the street looking for prostitutes, and a man who's behind giving all the calls and uh, all those contacts just to make sure people can get connected and enjoy prostitution. Organized crime is a serious issue, and we should all deal with it, not only on the demand side, but also on the supply side. Thank you.